So the primary purpose of DFS is to simplify access to uh, files stored across multiple servers. Now, I only have a single server here. So I'm going to try to replicate it on this and show you the benefit of DFS. Now I'm going to start by going to my file and storage services and I want to show you the shares that we have here. I've created these four shares, accounting, management, production, and sales. And they're all sitting on this server, but you know, for the purposes of demo, we'll pretend like they're on different servers. So I have all of those different uh, shares and for a user to access those shares, what they would do is they would open up File Explorer and then either they would access them via UNC name or through a mapping. So let's say we were accessing them through U the UNC name. We'd type backslash backslash and then the name of the server that we wanted to connect to. And once we got there, we would see all the shares that were available. And then they would, if they needed an accounting file, they'd go into an accounting share. And if they needed a sales file, they'd go into the sales share and... If we had mapped them as drive letters, then they, they could right-click and map network drive, or they would already have it mapped. And let me go ahead and just map this real quick. And then that's now going to show up when they go to their file manager. They'll see their accounting share. And if they'd mapped all four of them, you'd see all four different shares here. And you can see how this would be a little confusing, especially if we've got multiple certain essences on a single server there are other ways to solve it but let's say the accounting files the sales files the management files and the uh, production files were all on their own dedicated servers well that becomes a little more difficult now because now i can't tie them all together i have to have four unc paths and or four mapped drives in order to access all of my files well that's where dfs comes in it allows us to tie all of that together. So let me show you what this would look like. I'm going to go to Tools, and we're going to manage DFS here in DFS Management. And remember, we included both the DFS replication and the DFS namespaces. And so you'll see both of those here. Now I'm going to start by creating a DFS namespace, and I don't have one yet. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on New Namespace. Now, I need to set the server that's going to host my namespace. Now, that doesn't mean that all of the files have to be on that server. In fact, you could set it up where none of the files are actually on that server, or you could have it where some of them are and some of them are on other servers. But this is the server that people are going to access to get to those particular files. So this is what it would look like. I'm going to set Bassett301 as my server name, and then click Next. And so it's going to go out and it's going to try to uh, identify or verify Bassett 301, which is a server I'm on. So it should take it a minute to validate that. And once it validates it, then I'll be able to move along. Now remember, this DFS is like most of the tools in... Uh, in Windows that are built through the MMC is designed to be able to manage services both on your local machine and on your remote machines. So that's why it has things in here like this namespace or this uh, validation. It's so that I can install my DFS management tool, say on my workstation, and then access DFS on another server. So I'm going to call this namespace company files just for the fun of it. And then here I can edit settings if I want, and you can see where we can set share folder permissions. And let's go ahead and set all users, users have read and write permissions. And remember, we can use NTFS to filter these down a little bit later on. In fact, let's actually bump that up. Let's do administrators have full access, all other users have read and write. And hit OK. And then we'll control that later with uh, NTFS permissions. So that gives us our name. Now we can set this as dom no let me try this again as domain based or standalone. Standalone is stored on a single namespace server. A and you could put it on a failover cluster if you want more redundancy, but a domain based namespace, wow that's hard to say, is stored on one or more namespace servers in an active directory domain services. And then we can choose to enable or disable Windows Server 2008 mode. We're going to go ahead and leave it enabled for the moment and click Next. And then we review our namespace. And here's what it is, Bassett301.local backslash company files. 
We have a domain-based namespace, a namespace server, a root shared folder will be created if one does not exist. Local path for the namespace shared folder will be DFS roots company files. And then we're given administrative full, administrators full control everyone else has read and write. And let's click create. And this will work on creating our namespace. And this will take it a second here. We'll just let it run. And then once it gets done, we'll be able to add targets to our namespace. Don't you just love waiting for technology to catch up with what you're doing? You'll see here the tasks, which identifies what it's doing in the wizard. And then over here, there's another tab that will give you all of the errors that it has encountered. Didn't encounter any errors. You've successfully completed the namespace wizard. All right, cool. We now have a namespace called company files. So now that we can, we can click on our namespace, we can add folders, we can add additional namespace servers, we can delegate, manage permissions or remove it and so let's add a new folder from our new folder we're going to call this folder sales now and you see how it's propagating down here basset301.local backslash company files backslash sales now i'm going to add a folder target now the folder target is where we're going to go to find those actual folders and we're going to use the unc path name so it's backslash backslash basset 301 backslash sales and hit OK and that will add it as a target. Now I can add more than one target and this is where it gets really fun. If I have just one target then what I've done is I've simplified my management access or my file access. If I add more than one target, which can be on different servers, in fact, they should be on different servers. It doesn't make any sense to have them on the same server. If I add more than one target on different servers, then what will happen is when users go to access the namespace and they go to access this particular folder, sales, they will go to whichever server is available and is closest to them. And so DFS, DFS will direct them to the copy of the one that is in their site or the one that is closest to their site. And that's set up through DFS replication. So let me go ahead and click OK. And then this will add that as a folder or as a target. I can add a new folder. Let's do accounting. Let me capitalize that so it looks better. Accounting, I'm going to add a folder target. This time I'm going to browse for it just for the fun of it. And you'll see all of our shared folders and we'll hit OK. And then let me go ahead, we'll hit OK to that one and then we'll add another. So we've added sales, accounting. Let me add a new folder. This one's going to be management. I'm going to add, and this time I want to show you something else when I browse. So this is showing me everything that's on, showing shared folders that are on my current server. I can browse up here to find a different server if I'm trying to access a share that's on a different server. I can also choose to create a new shared folder from here as well. So let me do management. And then we're going to add one more new folder. We're going to add. And remember, we are pretending these are on different files. I'll do this one manually. Basset301 backslash production. Probably help if I set the name for it too, wouldn't it? Production. OK. Now, this gives me my namespace. And now I can add a new namespace server to it, delegate management permissions, remove it from the display, or look at its properties. And in its properties, we'll see the namespace, the type, the description, the referrals. So if we have more than one target, how do we refer the uh, clients to the right target? So we cache their referral for five minutes. And targets in the client site, 
or the lowest cost for ordering method targets in a client site are listed first in the referral. Select the method for ordering targets outside of the client site. So you can do, do it by lowest cost by random order or just not even give them the option. So we're going to do it by lowest cost. And then under advanced, we can optimize network polling for consistency or for scalability. So, and then we can enable access based enumeration for the namespace, which means if somebody doesn't have permissions to see a particular folder in the namespace, they won't be allowed, if they don't have permission to access, they won't be able to see it. Okay, hit apply and okay, and our namespace is now created. So let's go back to our folder here. And now when I go to Bassett 301, you're going to see company files. Now accounting, production, sales, and management are still all here because they're being uh, saved here. But now instead of having to go to each one individually, remember we're pretending like they're on different servers, I can go to company files and inside company files, I can see links to all of them. And so if I go to accounting and I'm going to create a new folder called accounts payable and I'm accessing this through the namespace right I create the new folder called accounts payable now if I were to go to the folder itself or the share itself I see my accounts payable folder if I go to the accounting folder on the C drive itself I see accounts payable so I can access this now through the share through the DFS namespace or through the uh, local C drive. But the point is that pretending that all of those are on different servers, right? Which one of these days, maybe I'll be back on campus and I'll be able to do a demo of it using multiple servers. But hopefully you can see how DFS does simplify access to all of those folders and bring all of your information together. Users, by the way, uh, or administrators, can still map that as a drive letter. So I'm going to go to Bassett 301 and I can right click on company files and map the network drive. And now that gives me one drive letter to access all of my company files, regardless of which there's which server they're on. And even if they're on multiple servers with different targets, it'll allow me to access the ones that are closest to me, the copies of the files that are closest to me without having to use multiple different shares, multiple different drive mappings, multiple different UNC paths. So that's how we configure a DFS namespace and why we may want to.